RuneScape is a medieval online point-and-click game that has existed for over two decades now. Despite its outdated technology, it's continued to hold the test of time. With a game this old and this big, it's no surprise some things have been forgotten or even covered up. In today's video, we're going to delve deep into its history and uncover the dark secrets lying in its depths. For those of you unfamiliar with iceberg videos, we start at the top where the most recognizable things exist. The deeper into the iceberg we go, the more obscure things we'll get. I focused more on the really deep stuff in this video since the majority of people watching are probably RuneScape players, but if you're not, the video will still make sense. So with that out of the way, let's dive in. Oh good, you're finally awake. Take this and get debriefed on today's sponsor. Conflict of Nations is a free-to-play military-themed strategy game set in the early 21st century. In it, you take control of your own army based on a real-world country. There's all sorts of units to help build your army, like tanks, jets, and even nuclear submarines. Use those units to declare war on your neighbors, or maybe even forge alliances. Speaking of neighbors, you can fight up to 128 other players in real time. With that many people, you'll have to play it smart so choose your strategy and do whatever it takes to rule the world. My favorite part has to be that you can take Conflict of Nations literally anywhere. You can play it on the same account on both PC and mobile. Click on the link in the description to get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. This offer is only available for the next 30 days, so act fast. Well, that was a weird dream, I guess. Anyway, let's continue. This is the top of the iceberg, which contains topics that are fairly well known among the game's community. As a result, I've chosen to make this section the shortest. Sailing is the most hyped RuneScape update that never happened. Back in 2008, an image began circulating the internet showing a picture of RuneScape's high scores. It looked entirely normal, except in the list of skills that players can train, a new one had appeared, sailing. Looking back now, the image was obviously photoshopped, but to naive 12 year olds it looked just good enough to be real. Over the next few years, players would constantly badger Jagex employees with questions about when sailing would release. Although it never did, it's been the topic of numerous jokes and April Fool's events. Sea Shanty 2 Sea Shanty 2 is easily RuneScape's most popular music track. Spend even just a few minutes browsing RuneScape-related memes, and it's sure to come up somewhere. Nobody really knows why players gravitated to it so much, but it's more or less inescapable. I think a good way to describe it is with a quote from the song's composer, Ian Taylor. There are plenty of silly videos featuring it, Rick Rolling, etc. Although it makes me cringe a little, I don't mind it being a humorous song, as it does have its charm. RS3 vs OSRS Two versions of RuneScape exist, RuneScape 3 and Old School RuneScape. RuneScape 3 is technically the original version of RuneScape, but much of its player base quit after a series of updates that the community hated back in 2012 and 2013. As a result, Old School RuneScape was launched back in 2013 to try and gain those players back. During Old School's early years, players of both games would frequently argue on social media over which game was the best. It got so bad that memes about it were the top posts of each game's respective subreddit. Luckily for us, these days the fighting has calmed down and most players do what they should have done from the start. Play whichever game they enjoy. Gilinor Anagram Gilinor is the name for the in-game world of RuneScape. Chances are, if you've been playing for a while, you've seen the word Gilinor come up hundreds if not thousands of times. But look a little closer and you'll notice something strange. Gilinor is an anagram for the word religion. With how much content there is surrounding RuneScape's gods, it really only makes sense. What doesn't make sense is how I played for over a decade before noticing. Now we dive into the second layer of the iceberg. Most things here are not widely known by the average RuneScape player. Mime Event Viewers Random events were originally introduced to try and combat RuneScape's botting problem. Thousands of players were using computer programs to cheat and play the game for them. So random events were added to whisk players away at random and have them solve a puzzle, or really, I guess just inconvenience them. Although an annoyance to most players, they broke their fair share of bots. One random event that still exists today is the Mime Random, where you get teleported to a stage and, well, have to mimic a mime. Many of you have probably completed it a couple times, but have you ever Ever thought of turning your camera around to see who's watching you perform? The crowd consists of three strange watchers who seem to represent RuneScape's three main gods, Saradomen, Guthix, and Zamorak. No clue why they're there, but I guess an episode of RuneScape Gods Exposed hasn't been uploaded in half a decade, so they needed some way to fill that time. Guthix! 
Norse code message. The island of Ja Tis So has a hidden secret, but it's not one you can find by looking for it. It's one you have to hear. The entire island has a music track playing called Norse Code. In it exists a secret Morse code message that when decoded spells out RuneScape. Funnily enough, the song was even referenced in a 2010 episode of the TV show White Collar. Sounds could correspond to numbers, wavelengths, RuneScape's encoded flute solo. Mechscape. Mechscape was another MMO that Jagex began working on in 2006. Essentially, it was described as RuneScape in space. Much like RuneScape, it was Java-based, built for web browsers, and shared similar user interfaces. For example, the right-click menus, health bars, and the iconic yellow overhead text. Mechscape development lasted until October of 2009, but it was terminated before release because it was a game that then-CEO Mark Gerhard said that Jagex wouldn't be proud of. The decision cost Jagex tens of millions of dollars. Jagex tried again to make a space-themed MMO called Stellar Dawn a year later. Stellar Dawn's development was paused in 2012, and as far as we know, hasn't been worked on since then, so I would not get your hopes up about that. Twisted Bush. The Twisted Bush is located right outside the Farming Guild. It was created to commemorate the 2019 Twisted Bow spawn glitch. The Twisted Bow is one of RuneScape's most powerful weapons and at the time was worth over a billion GP. After a weekly game update, players quickly noticed a Twisted Bow would appear on the floor where the bush exists today. When picked up, another one would spawn after 60 seconds. 32 minutes after the update, Jagex hotfixed it by making it so when picked up, it would be deleted instantly. 52 minutes in, they surrounded the bow with tree stumps and made it impossible to telegrab. And two hours in, they took the game offline and rolled everything back to before the glitch even happened. Construction Green Pixel. If you look really closely at the construction icon in the skills tab, you may notice that it has a random green pixel. It's actually not supposed to be there, and Jagex pulled to remove it back in 2017, however, for some reason the pull failed. Players took a strange liking to this random pixel. Later, when Jagex was adding new icons into the game, a glitch caused the pixel to accidentally be removed. Players made a huge deal about it, with hundreds of threads on Reddit about this tiny little pixel until Jagex reintroduced it to the game. It's a little crazy how the tiniest, insignificant thing can make thousands of players angry. Imagine if all that energy was focused into to actual problems, like how only 25% of the people watching this video are subscribed. Darkscape. Darkscape is another version of RuneScape that was released back in May of 2015. Its main features were that PvP was on everywhere, even in safe zones that guards protected, and members received 50% more experience than in normal RuneScape. It reminds me a lot of old school's Dead Man mode. Anyway, Darkscape had a small but extremely dedicated fanbase. Unfortunately, that fanbase wasn't enough to keep the game afloat, and the game closed in less than a year in March of 2016. Bornos. RuneScape currently has a pretty big scam bot problem. Bots will sit at the Grand Exchange using a variety of different methods to trick you out of your hard-earned GP and items. One popular scam is where a bot will offer to buy items at ridiculously high prices. For example, they'll buy a Twisted Bow for 2 billion GP. If someone trades them and puts a T-Bow in the trade screen, they then offer you a teleport tablet to Camelot saying, my main name Bornos is there. That's my account with all the GP on it and you have to go there so I can buy your bow. Take this tab and trade him in Camelot. Lot, which, of course, makes perfect sense and isn't sketchy at all. Essentially, they're hoping that the player doesn't notice that they've left their T-Bow in the trade screen and will trade the bow for a Tally tab. In actuality, there is no Bornos in Camelot. However, a max player named Bornos does exist on the high scores. More likely than not, he's not connected to the scam and Botter simply used his name in an attempt to seem more legitimate. Now we've arrived at the third layer of the iceberg. Experienced RuneScape players may begin to struggle to remember or even recognize some of the things I discuss here. Zaya Mounts the continent of Zaya has gone through quite a few changes throughout the years. Most recently, Hosidius and Shazian have been completely redone, and there are plans in place to renovate the rest. But why? Zaya is just too big, but originally, it was planned to be even bigger. This was the original concept art for Zaya, which would have expanded RuneScape's landmass by over 50%. One of the main reasons behind this was so the team could potentially introduce mounts into the game. Mounts were later scrapped, and when Zaya eventually released, it was still massive. It kind of looks like something I would have designed in Minecraft as a kid. Which, funnily enough, Zaya was originally built in Minecraft. Anyway, it's too big, too square and too useless. Zaya had no content. As a result, the team has had to spend the last few years fixing it up. Bot Only Worlds 
When Old School first opened, they had some pretty unorthodox methods for detecting bots. One of these was bot-only worlds. Essentially, if the game thought that you might be a bot, it would make you switch to a secret world so Jmods could study the account closer. These worlds weren't listed anywhere on the world selection screen, and it was only discovered when players were falsely flagged as being a bot and were moved to a bot world. Bot worlds have been gone for a while now, but I wouldn't mind if we could shove all the Grand Exchange scammers into one. Sandwich Lady RuneScape has a lot of NPCs that are based on real people, but my favorite has to be the Sandwich Lady. Back when Jagex was in their old office, they were surrounded by other small startup businesses. In this business center, they had a cafeteria. The cafeteria would send around a Sandwich Lady who would knock on Jagex's door and say, Sandwiches! <laughs> she even wore the same outfit pictured in the game. The reason she became a random event is because she literally interrupted work, much how random events interrupt you playing. The Old Knight Statue Myth the Old Knight is one of RuneScape's most popular players in history. He competed with players like Zezima for rank 1 on the high scores and maxed his account in 2005 just a few weeks before his death. He was a pillar of the community and after his passing memorials were held all over RuneScape. It was even believed that Jagex added this statue in the wilderness in commemoration of him. When examined it says this person was of great importance. However, this statue actually existed before the Old Knight's passing and in RuneScape 3 the statue has been graphically reworked to look like a woman. This statue is kind of iconic, so if you didn't know this fact, I'm sorry to kind of ruin it for you. But some good news is that with the release of Pharaoh's Enclave, Jagex added a pub inside of it called The Old Knight. Colon colon bank. RuneScape has a number of hidden codes, like colon colon display FPS, which will show you your frames per second, or colon colon render self, which will make your character invisible to just yourself. I promise it doesn't work on other people, you are perfectly visible to everyone else. My favorite though has to be the colon colon bank command. It's a command that is supposed to allow Jagex moderators to open their banks from anywhere, but when a player types it, their character just says out loud, hey everyone, I just tried to do something very silly. Next time you're at Winter Todd, give it a try and you'll see how easy it is to get literally everyone to flood the chat. Secret Pmod Rooms. These days player moderator powers are pretty limited, but the rank does come with a few perks. One of these is the player moderator room. It's essentially an example exact copy of Varrock Westbank's basement, but with almost everything stripped out of it. It is used for occasional meetings with Jagex moderators, but otherwise serves almost no purpose. The room also only exists in RuneScape 3, and as far as I'm aware there's no plans to add it to old school. Other than that, player moderators only real power is being able to mute players for an hour. So basically, school hall monitors who hand out detentions. The Lobster Pot Controversy I've listed a few things so far that RuneScape players have blown out of proportion, like the green pixel and the construction icon. On October 14th, 2020, Jagex made the strange decision to change the name of the Lobster Pot to Lobster Cage. I think you get the gist by now, there were riots, spamming the forums, and so on, until Jagex reversed it a week later. The Karamja Store the Karamja store is often considered the most overpowered moneymaker in old school history. Essentially, the store would buy items for 1.7 times their low alchemy value if you had the easy Karamja diaries completed, which is actually a pretty low bar. For items like battle staffs as well as rune and dragon armor, there were some ridiculous profits that could be made. People playing on multiple accounts were able to make an upwards of 8 to 12 million gold per hour. This is three times better than the best money maker that exists in old school runescape right now. Once Jagex addressed the issue, they changed it so you would need to complete the Karamja hard diaries in order to take advantage of the shop. This still wasn't enough and it was later patched out of the game entirely. Lost Random Events when it comes to developing a video game, sometimes not everything makes the cut. In RuneScape's case, there were two random events that were cancelled even though they were complete. The first one, the Duke of Bridgelum, involves traveling to the alternate dimension of Scape Rune, where you help the Duke reassemble dead cows. This one was cancelled because, well, it's just gross. The second cancelled random was titled Speedy Gnome. In it, you would race in an obstacle course alongside the fastest gnome in the world. The only problem is, the obstacle course was the same every time time so bots could easily bypass it. We've finally reached the last layer of the iceberg, a section of facts that even RuneScape's most experienced players have likely forgotten or even more likely never seen. Lord Magmus 
One of RuneScape's most fearsome beasts, Tiztok Jad, was originally known under a different name, Lord Magmus. A few years ago, when Mod Ghost was creating enemies for the Inferno, he brought up how, in order to find Jad's 3D model to edit it, it wouldn't come up unless he searched for Lord Magmus. The name Lord Magmus recently resurfaced when Mod Zuko tweeted about it saying how the name makes it sound like he would wear a top hat. Funnily enough, my good friend Fart Chartley has had Jat with a top hat as his profile picture for years, which according to Zuko, makes him canon in the RuneScape universe. Rotten Food Anyone who has watched my channel for a while is likely familiar with the Rotten Potato, an item only accessible to Jagex moderators. It allows them to teleport players, spawn NPCs, open their bank anywhere, or transform into some of the game's bosses, along with a couple other features. What you may not know is Jagex moderators have access to even more Rotten Food item tools. The Rotten Cabbage, Egg, and Carrot. These items are much more mysterious and most of their functionality is unknown. It's believed the cabbage is used primarily for controlling dead man moan tournaments, the carrot is meant for Jagex's bot busting streams, and the egg seems to be primarily for teleporting to RuneScape's many towns and bosses, as well as for gathering information on the game's NPCs. The World Wildlife Fund event. Back in 2015, Jagex partnered with the World Wildlife Fund to bring awareness to the endangerment of big cats like tigers, snow leopards, and lions. Together, they created an event where you would travel around Gilinor repairing the habitats of endangered species. Players were also able to donate bonds to support the WWF. What I find so interesting about this event is it's one of the rare occurrences where RuneScape and the real world connect. The Pride Riot Infiltration Speaking of real life crossing into RuneScape, in 2017 Jagex introduced an event called Gilbert's Colors, an event created to celebrate Pride Month. To complete the event, you had to find six rainbow strands of cloth and return it to Gilbert the Leprechaun who would give you a rainbow scarf as a reward. It may sound pretty simple, but this event went down as the most controversial moment in RuneScape's history. Players flooded Falador with offensive outfits, spam slurs, and overran the old school subreddit with arguments. It got so bad that even mainstream media began reporting it. Internally, Jagex ran their own investigation on what happened, and in an interview last year with XJMod Matt K, he said it wasn't RuneScape players who were spewing hate speech and causing problems. The people who were shouting weren't RuneScape players. We did a big, deep investigation into the people who were doing this stuff, anti-gay hate groups that had targeted the game. This was not, this was not the RuneScape players doing it. Merodak. Merodak was originally going to be Old School RuneScape's first unique boss. It was a level 2000 white dragon created by Mod Reach that would be defeated using both combat and skilling. If it had released, one of its rewards would have likely been white dragon armor. Ultimately, Merodak was cancelled because the team felt they already had enough endgame bosses for the time being and wanted to focus more on the early and mid game experience. Desert Treasure Racism Desert Treasure is one of RuneScape's most iconic quests and unlocks the extremely powerful Ancient Magic Spellbook. You might assume that a quest this big and important was dreamed up by a group of high-level content developers. Nope, it was developed by an intern. Well, at least it was originally. The intern struggled with programming it, and when he believed it was ready for testing, the quality assurance team immediately rejected it. Once it was finally in a somewhat playable state, it was discovered that the intern had written something pretty horrifying. During the quest, you'd visit the bandit camp, speak to a bandit who would instantly one-hit you while saying this line. Allah. Allah the intern was terminated soon after, and the project was passed off to Mod James. Sea Shanty 3 As mentioned earlier, I have no doubt that Sea Shanty 2 is the most popular music track in all of RuneScape's history. Seeing how Jagex is fond of making sequels to iconic quests such as Monkey Madness 2 and Dragon Slayer 2, it would only make sense for them to make a sequel to RuneScape's most iconic song, right? Well, it turns out, for a brief period of time, Sea Shanty 3 did exist. Back in 2005, when Port Serum was given a graphical rework, Sea Shanty 3 was also added. Oddly enough, it was removed the same day. As far as I've been able to find, nobody has a copy of the song, the trivia about it has been removed from the wiki, and this meme is the only trace of its existence that I can find. Duplication Glitch Cover-Up RuneScape has had a number of duplication glitches throughout the years. However, only one, well, as far as we know, was covered up by Jagex. Back in the early 2010s, Jagex's offices were oftentimes left empty on the weekends. There was nobody there to check the game console, issue bans, and so on. One Friday afternoon, when most Jmods were out of the office, three players discovered how to duplicate Dragon Fullhelms, one of RuneScape's rarest pieces of armor. Once the glitch was discovered on Monday morning, the three players were banned, and much of the gold they obtained was removed from the game. But the damage 
damage was already done. The helmet dropped from 35 million gold to just 3 million over the course of the week. Most of the community came up with their own theories on what happened. The two common beliefs were that A, merchanting clans manipulated the price down so they could flip it for profits later, or B, botters had just been farming the helmets and finally sold all of them off. Neither of these were true, but according to XJMod Reach, Jagex more or less said, yup, it was the merch clans. The RuneScape movie. Jagex has considered the idea of releasing a RuneScape movie a couple times. The first time it was ever mentioned was in 2007 when a poll was ran asking players what actors they wanted to see in the movie. I think that poll was probably just for laughs, but two years later when then CEO Modmark Gerhard was asked about it, he said that the movie was actually a possibility. Unfortunately, just a month later, Andrew Gower, one of the game's founders, said that it was unlikely. In 2011, the idea of a movie was brought up again. It was when the Financial Times published a report saying a new Jagex investor was exploring the idea of turning RuneScape into a film made by Hasbro, but ever since, it's never been brought up again. At this point, unfortunately, I doubt we'll ever get a RuneScape movie. Trojan Cow Sheepshear is the oldest quest in RuneScape history. In it, you need to collect 20 balls of wool for Farmer Fred. Seems pretty simple, right? Well, have you ever wondered what he needed all that wool for? In RuneScape's eighth post bag from the Hedge, a series of web posts from RuneScape's website where players could ask NPCs questions, it was revealed that Fred was using that wool to build what he calls a Trojan Cow, an obvious reference reference to the Trojan horse from Greek history. Fred never clarifies what the cow is for, but hey, maybe we'll figure that out in Sheep Shearer too. Much of the topics I've discussed today, I've actually already done full videos on before. If you want to learn more about something, chances are it'll be in the playlist I've listed on screen right now. 